Good morning. Good morning. I'm Kevin Baumiller, and I'm privileged to be Redding's Veteran Service Officer. And we didn't know what to expect today, but I guess if we, you have it, they will come. So welcome back to an in-person Veterans Day ceremony, 2021. <laughs> Honor Guard, post the colors. Please stand if you are able. The Reading Memorial High School Band Small Ensemble will now perform the national anthem followed by an opening prayer by Reverend David Campo, Reading Catholic Community, Lieutenant, United States Navy. A little over a century ago, Armistice Day was chosen on November 11th in honor of St. Martin of Tours, who himself was a soldier and dedicated not only to the service of his brothers and sisters, but firstly of the Lord. His heroic self-gift, I think, was formed in large part by the basis he received while himself a soldier. He was made a bishop and labored continuously for feeding the poor in body and spirit. While dying, his friends begged him to continue to remain alive just a little while longer. His response, I think, embodies the ethos of those men and women who have served this country, and this town, and this family. Lord, if your people still have need of my services, I will not avoid the toil. Your will be done. I have fought the good fight long enough, yet if you bid me continue to hold the battle line in defense of your camp, I will never beg to be excused from failing strength. I will do the work you entrust to me. While you command, I will fight beneath your banner. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to remember with gratitude our veterans who have served us. Help us not only to never forget your loving kindness, but also to never forget our beloved veterans who are precious in your eyes. We make this prayer humbly in your name. Amen. Please be seated. Hey, thank you to the band and thank you, Father Campo. Before we begin, uh, happy 246th birthday to the United States Marine Corps. On this Veterans Day, we marked the 103rd anniversary of the end of World War I. This was the beginning of what has become our Veterans Day. A day to celebrate, honor, thank America's soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guard men, and merchant sailors who have all bravely answered the call to defend our freedom. For the approximately 18 million veterans in our country today, I'd like to share a poem with you by Andrea C. Brett called I Am a Veteran. You may not know me the first time we meet, I'm just another you see on the street, but I am the reason you walk and breathe free. I am the reason for your liberty. I am a veteran. I work in the local factory all day. I own the restaurant just down the way. 
I sell your insurance. I start your IV. I've got the best looking grandchildren you'll ever see. I'm your grocer, your banker, your children's school teacher. I'm your plumber, your barber, your family's preacher. But there's a part of me you don't know very well. Just listen a moment, I have a story to tell. I am a veteran. I joined the service while still in my teens. I traded my prom dress for camouflage greens. I'm the first in my family to do something like this. I followed my father like he followed his. Defying my fears and hiding my doubt, I married my sweetheart before I shipped out. I missed Christmas, then Easter, the birth of my son. But I knew I was doing what had to be done. I served on the battlefront, I served on the base. I bound up the wounded and begged for God's grace. I gave orders to fire, I followed commands. I marched into conflict in far distant lands. In the jungle, the desert, on mountains and shores, in bunkers in tents, on Duncan earthen floors. While I fought on the ground, in the air, on the sea, my family and friends were home praying for me. For the land of the free and the home of the brave, I faced my demons in foxholes and caves. Then one dreaded day, without drummer or fife, I lost an arm, my buddy lost his life. I came home and moved on, but forever was changed. The perils of war and memory remain. I don't really say much, I don't feel I can, but I left home a child and came home a man. There are thousands like me, thousands more who are gone, but their legacy lives as time marches on. White crosses in rows and names carved in queue remind me, remind us of what these brave souls had to do. I am part of a fellowship, a strong mighty band of each man and woman who has served this great land. And when old glory waves, I stand proud, I stand tall. I helped her flying over you, over all. I am a veteran. Today, I thank every veteran here. I salute every veteran here and everyone at home. Thank you for your service. And now welcome Charlie Wells from Reading Boy Scout Troop 702, who will now read Governor Baker's Veterans Day Proclamation. A proclamation, whereas since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served a country in defense of freedom and liberty, and whereas on November 11, 1918, the armistice was signed in the Forest of Campaign by the Allied Nations and Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars, after four years of conflict. And whereas since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans, and whereas there are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas today, we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country. And whereas, we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage. And whereas, it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who served their country, so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. And whereas, in November 2021, the world will commemorate the 103rd anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I at 11 a.m., November 11, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11, 2021 to be Veterans Day, and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this 11th day of November in the year 2021, and, and, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 245th, signed Governor Baker, Lieutenant Governor Polito, and Secretary of State Galvin.
Thank you, Charlie. Well done. I now would like to invite Karen Herrick, Chair of the Reading Select Board, for her welcome rem welcoming remarks. Karen. Good morning and welcome. My name is Karen Gately Herrick. I'm the Chair of the Reading Select Board. It is my great privilege to be here today to honor our veterans on the 100th anniversary of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Let me start by thanking some of the many people who made this ceremony possible, including Veteran Service Officer Kevin Bowmiller, Town Manager Bob Lasher, Chief Christine Amendola, Reverend David Campo, Scout Troop 702, the RMHS Small Ensemble, and the Reading Police Honor Guard. In preparing for today, I turned to the Arlington National Cemetery History Series to understand how, of our, how this annual celebration has evolved over the past 100 years. 100 years ago, our country was still in the process of healing from the terrible national toll of World War I. And I remember reading about the remarks of, of how we survived it as a nation, it'll never happen again. And, and unfortunately, that was not the case. At that time, it was a custom for many families with service members to display a military flag in their window. The flag would display one or more blue stars to represent military family members. Prominent women's leader, Louis Bowen, herself, I believe a military mother, proposed that when a service member was lost, the blue star should be replaced with a gold star on the flag. In her words, the glory of death should be emphasized rather than its sadness. Many other women and mothers soon adopted this practice and formed organizations such as the American Gold Star Mothers and American War Mothers. And so almost in parallel with the creation of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, a new custom to honor and commemorate our veterans was born. The Gold Star family symbolism, so well recognized today, was the direct result of these women's voices unifying families and mothers across the country in their desire to remember their lost ones and honor their great sacrifice. Furthermore, I learned that a unique aspect of both the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and the Gold Star Initiative were the focus on the common man or the everyday soldier, the bulk of our armed forces. Until about 100 years ago, most military memorials were erected to recognize prominent leaders and now Veterans Day, formerly Armistice Day, would have traditions and a memorial that focused specifically on the more rank and file, on the soldiers, um, on the soldiers themselves, and would honor their bravery. With such a transition, Veterans Day celebrations now have moved to more of a focus on community and unity that persists today. And so here we are in 2021. Once again, we gather to remember our nation's soldiers and to thank their families for their great service and sacrifice. It is with great pleasure that I announced that on Tuesday, the Reading Select Board voted to make a small contribution on behalf of the entire Reading community to our military families by deciding and voting to waive the fees previously charged to military families to install the war memorials in our cemeteries. The Select Board would like to thank our veterans officer, Kevin Bo Miller, and the Cemetery Board of Trustees for bringing this opportunity to our attention and allowing us all to once again thank our veterans. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Karen. And I welcome our town manager, Bob LaSure, LaSure for her greetings. Uh, thank you, Kevin. A special thanks to all the speakers today, both those that preceded me and those that will follow. Uh, but especially, we need to give Kevin another round of applause for putting together not only a meaningful remembrance ceremony while being careful with public health, but perfect weather. So thank you, Kevin. I don't know how he does that. <clears throat> for the younger generations, and especially for medical professionals, first responders, or from frontline retail workers, uh, the pandemic has made personal risk and sacrifice a lot more real. Perhaps this gives us all a better opportunity to understand and appreciate the personal sacrifices made by all of our veterans, 
and to extend a more meaningful thank you for your service, both past and present. While the physical risks of the pandemic remain, the mental health risks have soared. This would come as no surprise to many of our veterans as this was the lasting sacrifice by so many of them. The so-called war on terror, now 20 years long, has seen an average of less than one military death per day. One too many to be sure. But contrast that with figures from the VA that over that same time period, there's been an average of 17 veteran suicides daily. Last Memorial Day, I thanked Reading's Brigadier General and retired Jack Hammond for perhaps his greatest achievement as the executive director of the Home Base Program, a Red Sox Foundation and Mass General Hospital program dedicated to healing the invisible wounds for veterans of all errors. The pandemic has brought us a unique opportunity to more readily recognize and do a better job as a community in the area of mental health. I'm very appreciative that last spring town meeting added a mental health position to our public safety department a little sooner than we were asking, planning to ask for it. Uh, sadly, they were right. It's something we needed now. And I just want to conclude by saying who better deserves our care and attention in mental health area than our veterans. So thank you all that have served and thank you all for coming today. It is great to be in person again. Thank you, Bob. And I'd now like to personally thank you for all your support during the past seven years I've had the privilege of being Redding's Veteran Services Officer. On behalf of all the veterans and their families in Redding, I pass on a heartfelt thank you. If there was a need, you took care of them. They and I will miss you. The high school ensemble will now perform America the Beautiful. Thank you very much. And now I have the privilege of welcome, welcoming Reading Police Department Deputy Chief Christine Amendola. Christine enlisted in the Army Reserves in 1999 right out of high school as a military police officer. She is deployed to Bosnia, then Iraq, where she did such a great job she was extended three times for a total of 18 months in country. And finally, Afghanistan for a to total of 12 years service. She completed her tour as a staff sergeant. She's, she is the recipient of the Bronze Star for service in Afghanistan, awarded numerous Army Commendation Medals, and graduated from Airborne School, which means she was crazy enough to jump out of planes. Christine has been a member of the Reading Police Department for 15 years and, ha and has advanced through the ranks of Sergeant lieutenant, and most recently, to deputy chief. She has a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from the University of Massachusetts at Lowell, and is currently pursuing a master's degree in criminal justice with the American Military University. She has two wonderful children, ages five and eight. Christine, we are honored to have you with us today. Good morning, distinguished guests, fellow veterans, family, and friends. This year marked a very important anniversary for America on September 11th. It was the 20th anniversary of the tax on the United States of America from Al Qaeda. Many of you were here on the Commons that day to honor those who had lost their lives tragically that day. We honored all the first responders who were there to try to clean up the chaos. 
We heard from three amazing school students who were not even born yet tell us what that day means to them. But for some of us, that day was only the beginning of the longest war in American history to come in Afghanistan. Concurrently, two years later, another war would begin in Iraq as well. The war in Iraq, known as Operation Iraqi Freedom, officially ended in 2011. However, we still have troops deployed there, many of whom were on their fifth or more tour over there. But Iraq has seen its lowest violence in there in a long time. In contrast, the withdrawal from Afghanistan after 19 years and 10 months did not go as smooth. There was much controversy to this exit. We watched the Taliban quickly take over, and the Afghan military and president were nowhere to be found. The most tragic part of the exit was hearing that 13 of our service members were killed in 180 civilian Afghanistans that week. One of the brave men and women whom died that day was Marine Corps Sergeant Rosario Picario, right from Lawrence. We also watched our American equipment get left behind and used by the Taliban. Many of my friends were asking me if this was normal. I could only answer no, I have never seen anything like this before. Many veterans were heartbroken and de felt defeated for all their efforts. Was our time away from our family and friends all for nothing? Was the 2,401 service members who lost their lives and 20,093 wounded in action all for nothing? I refuse to believe that, and I look to find the positive of our almost 20 years there. I read an article from an Afghanistan female journalist who stated the United States being here for almost 20 years was not for nothing. She stated it gave girls a chance at an education and opportunity they had never had before. She stated they lived in darkness and in fear, but while America was there, it was a relief. American soldiers must also not forget they disseminated Al-Qaeda. There has not been a large-scale terrorist attack in 20 years on American soil. That is because of all the work of our service members. But the most important aspect of all of it, I remind myself that I was there for my brothers and sisters fighting next to me. We did it to keep America safe. Many of us have no say in where a commander-in-chief tells us to go. When we get the call, it does not matter our opinions, religious beliefs, or p political affiliation. We go because we took an oath to defend this country. Afghanistan was never going to be an easy exit. They do not have the allegiance to their country the way Americans do. They have been separated by wars and religion for hundreds of years. My only hope is that they can come together, use the training we provided them for so long, and take back control of their country. We must not forget our veterans of past wars. Many of you have served in the Gulf War, Vietnam, and we even have World War II veterans out there. All of these brave men and women wore their uniform with pride and signed up to do something most people do not want to do. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your service. I think any veteran out there would agree there's no greater pride and joy than serving in our United States military. Growing up, I had no ambition or thoughts to ever join the Army. My brother is a year older than me, and at the age of 17, he enlisted in the Army. I was nervous, and I asked him if he was crazy. After he finished boot camp, I went to his graduation. Watching this, a feeling came over me that I could not explain. I knew this was for myself as well. I needed to serve my country. I, too, decided to enlist at the age of 17. I decided to join the reserves, thinking I would also go to college and become a police officer. Well, at that time, the Reserves and National Guard changed quickly and were called to active duty many times. I was privileged and honored to deploy to Bosnia, Iraq, and Afghanistan. I also got to spend a lot of time in Panama and help build schools and hospitals over there. As a military police officer, I was able to be on the front lines of these deployments. I have made lifelong friends who I'm considered my family. I will end with a very recent story with a great ending. I was recently out to dinner with a friend, and we made friends with the people next to us. This gentleman was a proud Vietnam veteran wearing his Vietnam hat, or cover as you probably all prefer. He began telling us how his son is having a hard time adjusting to civilian life after going to war a few times. This gentleman looked at me in sadness and said I could never understand. To his shock, I told him I can't understand and I have been to war. He could not believe I was a fellow veteran. I didn't fit his typical idea of a veteran. We continued to talk about how we could get his son help. He gave me a big hug as we left and apologized for assuming I couldn't understand. I was happy to show this gentleman there are so many veterans out there and you may never know who you are talking to. In conclusion, I want to say thank you so much to all the veterans out here today. I also want to give a special thanks to all the parents, spouses, family, and friends of our service members. 
We could not do this without you, and your love and support mean everything. Thank you to our wonderful Veteran Affairs Officer, Kevin Bo Miller, for putting this event together and always being here for your fellow veterans. To all the Marines out there, happy birthday. I may be out of the military now, but I am happy I can continue my service as com amazing community as a Reading Police Officer. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak today. Thank you, Christine. Well done. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you for the ser your service to our country and your continued service to the community in Reading. I now invite Father Campo for a closing prayer, which will be followed by taps. Thank you, Kevin. This prayer was composed by um, Ignatius of Loyola to his Companions of Christ, uh, nicknamed the Marines of the Church. Hurrah. We give thanks to our Heavenly Father for all veterans. Teach us, like you did your devoted servants of this country, to serve you as you desire, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek rest, to labor and not to ask for reward. Save that in knowing that I do your will. We make this prayer in your holy name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. In closing, I'd like to thank everyone who participated in today's ceremony. The Reading High, High School Band Ensemble, the Reading Police Honor Guard, and a special thank to the Reading Police Department for again raising funds through the No Shave November to support Home Base, an organization which, help, which helps veterans and their families who are dealing with the invisible wounds of war. To Father Campo, Karen Herrick, Deputy Chief Amandola, and again to RCTV for always doing a great job. Special, th special thank you to our town manager, Bob LaLasher, and the Reading Select Board for their continued support of all veterans' issues throughout the year. And finally, I'd like to thank our assistant town manager, Jean Delios, and her mother, Mary Ann Johnson for coordinating our, our coffee social today. So thank you very much. Well done. <laughs> to close, please remember that every second of every day, there are sailors, soldiers, airmen and Marines, men and women, protecting our way of life. May God bless them and their families. Thank you and be well, everybody. <laughs>